with Jacob. I'm Yuri. We're going for a drive. Twenty twenty two Jaguar F Pace SVR with launch control. That's quick. Horsepower and torque. Five hundred and fifty horsepower, five hundred and sixteen pound feet of torque from a supercharged five liter V eight. And this kind of competes with the Trackhawk an X5M, a Porsche Cayenne, a GLE 63. Yeah, pretty much. Now, what is this cost-wise? Uh, so this has been refreshed, and the starting price in US dollars is $84,600. And if you're shopping for a new Jaguar F-Pace, click the True Car link in the top right corner for discounted price offers. And if you're shopping for one of these, I highly recommend putting all four windows down, downshifting, and listening to these exhaust crackles upshifts. Oh my God. Okay, we'll that is, back up. That is friggin' insane. That is probably the best sounding car of 2021, which is like crazy because most cars have that particular filter, which makes them sound like garbage. So, you know. Yeah, this one also does have that. So I'm not really sure what they did to kind of go around that because we've also driven the F-Type R with a similar engine, similar exhaust, but it didn't really sound this good. I think this is mostly the upshift crackles, like chainsaw. Yeah. But we don't really get those downshift blah, 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 like we used to. Yeah, exactly. So it is definitely muted below like 3000 RPM, but on upshifts, it's like, they, they just give you all the volume. Like, oh my God, it's e so good. Exhaust sound of the year. I don't think anyone else can beat that. And nothing we've driven up to this point sounds nearly this good besides my modified Fiat 500 Abarth, to be brutally honest. Yeah, it does sound really good. I think the R8 also sounded really good, but like, this is incredible. The tone of this V8 is just, Jaguar killed it. Like, amazing, especially that this is coming from Europe. No, no one's doing supercharged V8s. Like, everyone's doing twin turbos, which mute everything. Nothing, so. nothing sounds as good. No, like, dude, this is... Okay, it's also really quick. <laughs> and you actually want to use the paddles because of that. It's hard to drive this calmly. Yeah, it really is. So I am in dynamic mode. I do have the traction off. And new for 2022, we also have launch control because we didn't have it in the previous generation when we compared this to the Trackhawk. Yeah, but too bad there's no like very aggressive launch. But once it gets going, it's good. But then you don't get those chainsaw things from the launch control. So it's kind of like just don't even use it. Yeah, pretty much. Like who cares about the 0 to 60 even though it is quite quick. It's like around four seconds just under. But it's like you just want those chainsaw upshifts. The, the one in second to third is the best like that God, and, and the fact that you can hear it with the windows up is also pretty insane and it is a zf eight speed auto it responds so quickly we love this transmission especially because you get those chainsaw upshifts and this coupled with that supercharged five liter v8 like they just killed it on this drivetrain like it feels really special and jaguars always have character that the german cars are really missing and with all these new updates on this interior as well this is actually now one of my favorite SUVs ever. But you don't get any supercharged wine out of it. Like you can kind of hear it when you're in front, but it's not track hockey. -y. Right, exactly. This is like the much classier Jag version of that. And one last thing about that exhaust, you can still hear some crackles here and there. It isn't that same thing you can't do like tap, tap, tap. All that's kind of gone. Tap, tap, tap. Throttle off burbles. Exactly, but the burbles, the tone, the amount of them so let's use all of that in the cliche corner and okay this thing is a weapon off throttle but on throttle it just wants to understeer before it oversteers and it doesn't give me that much confidence it's a little bit sketchy to drive but it's also kind of fun like <laughs> it doesn't handle as well as i would have liked it to but it's also an suv so i'm kind of okay with that if you're driving it i like under seven tenths or whatever, it's very, very nice through the corners. It's just when you push it like to the edge. Yeah, and as long as you're off throttle when you're doing your turns, you almost have to treat it like a front wheel drive car. But I feel like people aren't really gonna try to turn with this. This is more of a, I wanna race against my track hawk buddies at the track or just floor it in a straight line or, or whatever. Yeah, I, I wouldn't really advise taking this to the track. This is, a, this is a straight line kind of thing, but it's like really good at that. But the suspension is comfortable. It has been updated. Apparently it is stiffer, but I haven't really noticed it being too stiff especially if you put it into comfort mode, so it does have adaptive suspension. It does not have air suspension. Yeah, in all modes, it's 
perfectly fine. Yeah, like dynamic is actually surprisingly good. I expected it to be a little bit firmer, especially if Jag's saying it's going to be firmer, but no, this is still great. All right, so before you drive, roll the back windows down only. Okay, <laughs> roll those back up and let's get you into the driver's seat. No launch control, just floor it paddles. Chainsaw. That's so much more satisfying. So much better. And for everyone watching on your TV, this is how you like this video. Thanks for giving it a thumbs up on your TV. And inside, I love shifting it at red line. It's very easy to see. I don't bog down or anything. And I've got it in my head-up display too with the gears that move over. It's a very good system if you're trying to nail shifts. Yeah, and the gauge looks really good. It's not laggy. You can customize it pretty crazily, but we just like the one in the middle with the two cars on the sides because we don't want anything else on the sides. And even like redlining it a bit, bogging down a tiny bit, made it a good for like an upshift. It didn't ruin it from first to second. Yeah, and it just sounded good. But it also looks good, so let's talk about all the changes that happened since the last one we drove against that track hawk. Okay, so there are basically all new body panels for the most part out front and out back. Uh, the most noticeable is the larger intakes, I'd say, and the headlights. Pretty much it looks like they went from the old style F-Type to this new style F-Pace like they did previously. So that design language translated to an SUV actually works really well, just like I think it works well on Mercedes design language when they transitioned all their models to that new stuff. And then from the front end, the thing I noticed the most is we've got those plastic cladding style swoops that come around on like the bottom intakes. Yeah, but it's like a nice gray, it's painted. Yeah, it, it was a lot different than the last gen style. And then the headlights being different as well. And then if we pop the hood, there's no engine cover there for the SVR, which is pretty cool. Yeah, engine looks good, supercharger on top. I love how this thing looks. And talking about these wheels, they look amazing. I think they actually killed it on these. They're like different enough from any other wheel design. Yeah, they actually look kind of electric-y as well. I wouldn't be surprised seeing them on an electric car. Yeah, like the gray part feels like something that should be taken off on an electric car or added. And then what would be the Continental recommended tire for the F-Pace SVR? The Sport Contact 6. And what do you think of this color? It's all right. It is a $6,100 option. You can also get yellow for the same price. I would advise getting yellow or even the blue, same blue that we had on the previous version. I don't even know what color I'd get a Jag because I feel like Jags have to be dark, deep colors. I get that too, but like it's funny seeing a yellow one. And unfortunately, it is kind of muggy out today, so we can't get some good body lines and crisp juiciness out of the paint. Yes, because it is actually a ultra metallic paint, but yeah, we can't show you we'll, today, sorry. We'll, we'll try. So now moving on to the back end, first thing I noticed was we've got really cool dual exhaust. Yeah, the exhaust looks amazing. They are real. We've already listened to it from the outside, but we might as well listen to it again. Too bad it has a soft limiter, but... <laughs> I can give it a pass. Dude, that literally never gets old. Okay. Like never. Tail lights. I uh, look pretty good. Nothing too crazy though. They're a lot like more squished, but I think I like the previous gen style more from those looks. Yeah. Just like, I think we really like the F type as well from the previous gen. Then we got a little spoiler up there. Overall, the back end does look nice and thick. And at the very bottom below both of the tires in the front and the back, we got these cool little grooves there. Yeah. I guess it's for airflow. It looks really cool. I, I love that little touch. So looks of this Jag compared to comparable European cars in the track hawk. I think this is special enough that I like this a lot and it's near the top. Like, I love the Trackhawk. I think this looks better than all the German SUVs. I'm going to say tied with the Trackhawk. Tied, I think tied with all of them. Okay. They all look good. All right, a little push through the cliche corner. Yeah, be easy on the push if you put use too much throttle. <laughs> yeah, I'll go, I'll go like, I'll go that seven tenths that I was talking about. All right. So that it doesn't overreact or anything. Yes, understeer. perfectly adequate. The chassis is fairly well balanced. You just have to be very easy on the throttle. But like, legit, there's only like 10 people who drift their SUVs and stuff. Like it's yeah. not that <laughs> much of a priority for these manufacturers. Eight of those are Chris Harris and two are us. <laughs> <laughs> so now moving on to the inside, there have been some changes. Mostly that I noticed was this infotainment is different than the old one. Yeah, so it is a large screen. This is what Jaguar is now doing. I really like this infotainment. We do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's not laggy. I, I really like what they did here. Yeah, very fluid. Uh, the design is cool. The Apple CarPlay is like very tall. Yeah. And then we do have a roller for your volume and a hard button. Then we've got a little button here for your modes and everything. We do have some black capacitive touch buttons for like your exhaust and stuff and a little bit on your temperature and for your mirrors on the side. 
yeah, not the biggest fan of that, but the temperature, I actually got used to it because you kind of just push-pull depending on if you want your cooled or heated seats or if you want to change your fan speed. So I kind of like what they did here. And then if we go to our 360 cameras, it is high res. We do have 360 that goes all the way around. And then we do have the mode where it'll show you what's below you. So when you come to a stop and everything, you can see which is pretty nice, what a lot of Land Rovers have. Yeah, so the tech in here overall has been significantly improved and I, I love what they did with this interior now. So that means they must have improved the lane keep and lane centering as well. I'd like to say yes, but it just kind of bounces you between the lanes. It doesn't lane center you. God damn it! Yeah, oh well. And the shifter has a weird pattern and kind of shape to it. I don't find it to be the most comfortable for palm resting. It's very interesting. It's different than everything else because it's, it's not like a shifter like this. It's a shifter like this. Yeah. I think Jag in every generation does like the weirdest shifters. Because remember, they used to have the ones that would disappear and stuff between Land Rover. So they're doing a lot of weird stuff with shifters. I mean, this does look pretty cool. And then below that, we've got two cup holders at different heights so we can fit a small cup just fine. And we do have those very tight rubbery grips as well. Seems all right. I feel like they spaced it out a bit. I think so. Visors? Well, let's find out. Three, two, one. Oh, Fail. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and these seats are very comfortable, very supportive. When I first got into the interior, I did not expect not to have leather. So I'm kind of pleasantly surprised by having this suede cloth. They're very firm, but I like firm seats and I really love the look of them, how thin they are. It really reminds me of an actual F-Type. Yeah, when I said they were comfortable, they're still comfortable for as firm as they are. And I don't normally like firm seats, so they did a really good job with these seats. And then how about back seat room? Uh, surprisingly good. I have no issues at six foot one and a half. And then how about trunk room for the box test? One, two, three, our newest box test member, Putt Pirates at Twitch. And four, our newest box test member, Samuel L. S. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Sorry we couldn't fit these boxes because this is a super fast SUV. Not really meant for boxes. Also pretty good. Not as good as a Civic Hatchback, right? <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for the new gen to see what that's like. That's Civic Hatchback, man. So I feel like that's pretty much everything with this F-Pace SVR. Should we get to the price? Let's do it. This one starts at $96,250. Canadian. And this one's optioned out to $110,150. Pretty reasonable for a Jag SUV that sounds this good, especially considering it's the best sounding car of the year so far from the straight pipes. And if you're shopping for a new Jaguar F-Pace and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the straight pipes link. Yeah, SVR, uh, this is a very special car. I, I love this thing at the top of my list of SUVs. So would you take this over a Mercedes equivalent, BMW equivalent, Audi equivalent, Trackhawk, or the Maserati Levante Trofeo, which we loved, and that was like meant to drift and sounded good and had amazing lane keep. Okay, I'm gonna say yes, I would take it over all of those, but I would tie it with the Trackhawk and I would actually tie it with that Maserati. I really like that Maserati. That thing was an animal, but I think I like the tone of this more. It's, just, it's more aggressive, less kind of Italian refined. I think I'd go Trofeo. I, I could see you liking that a lot more. Go, going with the Maserati, a little more rare, but this is also rare but definitely better sounding than all of its competitors on the Germany side and equal to the Trackhawk. Yeah, so shout out Jag for keeping the supercharger V8 alive uh, for as long as you have. So let us know in the comments below, Jaguar, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Jeep, or Maserati. Yeah, that's a, that's a good list of very strong performers. And if you're one of the subscribers who are still watching right now, share this video with your friends. Yes, thank you subscribers.